If you ever get on your tractor and you turn the key to start it and you just get a click and it won't start and you have to go get your battery charger again in order to start your tractor. Or if you've wondered, have I left the battery charger on and have to get out of bed to go out to the barn to look? If you are buying batteries every six months because they're draining down and you have to replace them often. And if you only got one start, you know you haven't got the second start. If maybe the mice at your house think that the wiring on your tractor is especially tasty and have chewed it all up, this is the video for you. If you found yourself in those scenarios, it probably means that your charging system is not working. So in this video, my dad, Dan, and myself, my name's Rachel, are going to show you how to troubleshoot the charging system and figure out if the reason why you're having these problems is because of the battery, the voltage regulator, or the generator. And we're also gonna show you how to install a new wiring harness and dash. This is a Ford 3000 and this one is gas, that one is diesel. So whatever tractor you have, gas or diesel, the techniques that we show are gonna apply. So let's get to work. First, let's talk about the battery. This is a maintenance free battery. So this is an easy ba uh, battery to have in your tractor. When you use a load tester like this, they are polarity sensitive. So you do need to hook it up the right way. So I've got my um, positive and negative here. And then you can see this is what's called a load tester and you can see that it is showing that this is showing 12 volts. So that's a good sign. Then you press this button and you see that it goes underneath a load and this is right on the borderline of yellow to red. If this battery was in the red, I don't think that it could be saved, but because it's in the yellow, that tells me that this battery could accept a charge. This tractor has been setting for a little while, so it might just be that it needs to run with, on a tractor with a good charging system and it could recover. I wouldn't give up hope on this battery yet, but a load test is a great way to see if this battery is performing correctly. If you don't have a load tester, these can be a little bit uh, pricey to purchase. So if you don't have one, you can just take your battery to an auto parts store and they have load testers and would be happy to test that for you. And then you could purchase a new one if your battery doesn't check out okay. But that's that's the very first step. Sometimes people will use a multimeter to check their battery and that does tell you about the voltage of the battery but it doesn't do the load test. So a tester like this will take it one step further to help you confirm if your battery is the culprit or not. Also pay attention to your connections. You don't want to see any corrosion or any damaged cables as those could cause problems for you as well. So we're going to show you a couple quick tests. The tractor has a warning light on it. It's the one on the left of the dash here. When you turn the key on, this light comes on and it's red. When you start the tractor, when the charging system start working, that light should go out. So we're going to see if that happens on this tractor here. And there. So you've seen the light went out. As soon as I started the tractor, the light went right out. So that means the charging system on this tractor is working. So that's one test you can do. Now the light bulb could be burned out on the dash. We're going to get to that later. It's an easy fix on the light bulb, but we can just turn the key on without starting the tractor. The light comes on, obviously the bulb's working. So the next test I'm going to do to see if my tractor, the charging system is actually working, is so I'm going to start the tractor back up. I'm going to take the negative battery cable off the battery. If the charging system is working, the tractor will keep running. So here we go. The tractor kept running, so obviously the charging system is feeding the tractor. Now the charging system on our tractor is working, but if your tractor fails either of those tests with the warning light or removing the battery cable, then you need to keep going on your troubleshooting and decide if your problem is the voltage regulator or the generator or both. I should note that that test with the battery cable that my dad showed only applies to a gas tractor. If you have a diesel, skip that test. Now the voltage regulator is right here. It's this rectangular black box and it has a wire that connects to the field in the generator and it excites the field in the generator. So if your voltage regulator is not working, it'll never excite the fields in the generator and your charging system won't work. So here's how you can test that and determine if your voltage regulator is working or not. I'm using a multimeter here that is set to DC voltage to perform this test. I'm going to remove this wire that comes from the voltage regulator and goes into the field of the generator. You can see I just pop that right off there. And then I'm gonna put one end of my multimeter probe right in the wire. I'm gonna make sure that it's 
stuck in there good. And then the other end, I'm just going to make ground right here. Now I'm going to have my dad start the tractor, and we're going to see what happens on the meter. When he starts it, I'm being careful of the moving parts. Right here you can see that it's moving. It's up to 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, and it keeps climbing. It's okay if the voltage reading that you're getting is a little bit sporadic. It won't be steady. That doesn't, if it's sporadic like mine, it doesn't mean that you have a problem. If you aren't getting voltage by doing this test, that means that your voltage regulator could be the culprit of your charging system problems. If you've determined that your voltage regulator is bad, then we're going to change it. So these are fragile um, units and the old days you used to use the term flashing. You do not flash these, okay? More damage is done by people out there with hot wires trying to flash these, so this does not need to be flashed. All we're gonna do is simply take the prongs off and put it in there. It's rubber cushioned onto the dash. We're gonna put the bolts back on. The rubber cushions come new on this one, so you're gonna take them off, make sure they come off with the old one, and then put one wire for one wire. Take one off, put one on. And that's the way I'm going to do this really quick and put this on, and then we'll test the next step. So I just put them back on one for one, and now I'm just going to put them back on. Okay, so I've got it back on, and if you've seen me put them all on, I didn't tell you where to put them, don't panic. We're going to put the wiring harness on this tractor, and we'll go over it step by step just in a little bit. Right now, what we're trying to do is show you if your voltage regulator is just bad, we put a new one on, and we're going to continue on with the generator troubleshooting next. There are many ways to test a generator. My grandpa taught me to take the generator off, put it in a vise, and spin it with a drill to measure and make sure that the generator is working. If you want to do that, go for it. I'm going to show you a way you can test the generator while it's still on the tractor. So I have my multimeter again here. It's at DC voltage, same setting that we had for the uh, field test on the voltage regulator. And I'm going to set my probes on the battery and you can see it's at 12.02. That means that my battery is picking up a little bit of charge here as we've been working, so that's good. Now, when we start the tractor, we're gonna see it dip down just a little bit because the tractor's drawing from the battery and then as it runs, we should see it pick up a little bit and that would indicate that our generator is working. Right. There's the drop that I was talking about. And now the tractor is revving up to full speed, and you can see it continues to climb. And there it is, it's already at 12.36, it keeps going up. So the meter did just as I said it was going to. This tells me that our generator is good. If your generator fails this test, then you need to continue on and replace your generator, as that could be the culprit for your charging system not working. Four screws hold your dash in place. Once you've taken them out, you can pry your dash out. We're choosing to replace our dash because it's a little bit cloudy. We like to see our gauges a little bit better. But uh, if you, and then we're gonna also replace the wiring harness. So we're just cutting all this off or pulling it all off because we're gonna replace it. If you were only gonna replace your dash and keep your wiring harness, you could go a little bit slower here and replace things one at a time rather than the, hack it all off method that we're using. All right, so Rachel is on the other side. I'm trying to get the speedometer cable out to give her a little slack here. And boy, this speedometer cable has been in that position for a long time. I'm trying to get it to come out of there. You're really close. Yeah, but it's stuck in the back of the speedometer itself. There you go. There. And we're going to put a new cable on, so I'm just going to slide that forward. Rachel's just trying to get all of them off. And you can see these light bulbs are just in a little socket. We'll show you how to put them in later when we put the new dash in. But here's the dash. This is um, a voltage stabilizer that comes with the new one. Uh, so we'll talk about that when we put the new dash in. The harness does have a connector here which will pull apart. That's going to be the front harness and this rear harness will come back through the dash. While Rachel's doing that, I'm going to pull the speedometer key. We'll out the little hole that comes out here and we'll put that in new later. 
So we've got to get the switches out of the dash because this is part of the lower harness here. So I'm taking the nut off the outside of the switch here. And once I get that nut off, that's all that holds the switch in. I can punch it out and I can bring it right down here below to where I can get my hands on the switch and all the wires. And I am not too worried about which one goes to which on here. Now, if you were just changing a switch, boy, you'd want to take one off, one off, one off, and one off. But these are not the wires I'm going to use. I'm using a new harness. So I'm just going to take them all off, and I'm trying to free up the harness. For the headlights, you'll need to find this pin on the bottom removed either with a punch or an Allen wrench like this. Then once you have it removed, you can pull the knob off, which will free up the switch. There is a nut behind here, which you screw off just like you did for the ignition switch. And then your um, headlight switch can pull out the back. Last part before we pour the harness out here is our neutral safety switch in the transmission. And they just pull apart. These sometimes can come out hard this one came out pretty good. And then the last wire over here is actually your rear tail light. So this wire here in the back is our rear tail lights. I'll get that apart. The other ones came easy. And of course this one, there, got it. So now, Rachel, you should be able to pull that harness up out of there. Let's hope. And there it is. When you are ready to freshen up the charging system on your own tractor, you will need some parts. And the parts that are on the toolbox in front of me are ones that are offered on our website, farmtractorrepair.com. Our business, JD Productions, offers these to you. Now, everything that's shown here on the toolbox is part of a premium kit. So if your tractor is in really bad shape and you know I need to replace everything, you can get it all in one kit and it's really simple to order that way. But if you don't need everything that's on the table, you can also buy these parts individually. So you can buy just the dash, just the belt, the wiring harness, the light bulbs, the voltage regulator, the generator. We also offer this little gear for the tachometer if you need to replace yours as well as an individual item. I know that you can purchase these sorts of parts lots of places, but we ask that you uh, make the purchase on our website as that purchase will help to fund future tractor tutorials. Let's get back to work. Your wiring harness comes in two separate pieces, just like the original harness with a connector here. So as you can imagine, the connector is gonna go up towards the front of the tractor. Then look at the rest of your harness and you'll see a split here. This split needs to go on that side of the steering column. This split with the five wires is gonna go to the ignition switch and this side goes to the headlight switch. So as we fish it through here, they've got a split around the steering column. Figured that would be easier to see because once we push it through here, you're not going to be able to see it anymore. So I'm putting my hand down here and I can touch it. I'm ready to pull mine through. I am too. You got yours? So and, far. Um, hung up on there. There we go. Good. I got plenty. Okay, and this is going to just rest here until we're ready for it on the dash. And my wires will reach the switch. Mine, mine will too. Okay, great. All right. You can connect your neutral safety switch here. We have a separate video that goes over the safety switch. We show how to troubleshoot it and replace it. So if you want to look for that, it's the ignition tune-up video. Those connect just like that. And then your tail light wire back here just plugs in as such. We got the switch out of the dash. You can see how to hook this up here. So on your new switch, you have the heavy red wire here in the back. This is the power coming in right here. The two wires are your rear lights and your instrument. They go on the prong up here, and then your headlights are all by himself over here, and they go on the prong over here. So this is what it's going to look like underneath the dash when you get the wiring harness up there so you can see what we have. Mm -hmm. right. There's four light bulbs that have to be put in, and they do not come with the dash, and they sell these separately, and they're a little stinker to put in. You have to push them in and turn them and lock them in. That's how them go in. Then on the back side of your dash here, make sure that you've got that rubber gasket around the perimeter before you start hooking up wires. So feed this in here, just rest it there so that we can look at it. We'll start here with the first wire right there that's ground, and that is your black wire in your cluster. Next, you can choose this white wire. Um, in your diagram, it might identify this wire as gray, but either white or gray goes to the B on the voltage stabilizer, which is this little piece right here. So next we have the blue wire goes to the temperature gauge, which is right under there. And there's a little if, T there to help you find yep. it. And you can look at the other side of the gauge too. So on the lights, they're color coded. We got yellow and gray. 
and it's the charging one. So these have little prongs and they just push in. You gotta kinda get it started and they snap in and there you are. The next light is the gray, gray wire or the white, white and it's for the oil pressure. So that goes in the very bottom down here and it snaps in there. Your last two here are just for illumination and they go right up here at the top. And the last thing to hook in is our speedometer cable and the fuel sender. That doesn't come in the harness, so your fuel sender goes over here and plugs in the far side. I installed a new tachometer cable. Also, sometimes people call this a speedometer cable. There's a little tiny rubber cover to protect the end, so you want to take that off, but leave the O-ring on there. And then you got to bring the dash up so that it's straight and you can install this speedometer cable straight in there and start tightening this up by hand and then finish it up. Then your dash will just slide right into place. Be gentle with it, don't force it. Get it lined up and then you can use those same four screws in the corner just to tighten it up. We're ready for the second half of the harness and we'll start with the black wire right here. This goes to ground. There's a ring loop terminal on the end of one side of your black wire. And then the other cluster of your black wire will come up here and that's the first uh, prong on your voltage regulator up here. It's E is the letter that you're looking for. The next wire that you're gonna hook up is this heavy red one and that goes on D for the armature. So slide that up on there next. Now, if you have a diesel tractor, your voltage regulator is gonna be on the opposite side of the tractor, but that's okay, it still hooks up the same way. Next wire, we're gonna go for this brownish yellowy looking one. And that is, goes on WL, which stands for warning light. So we'll slide that up on there. You can hear those snap into place and that's what you want to hear. Next, we have green, which is for the field. We talked about that earlier. Then we have this one that's both yellow and red together. You can see that color on the wire. And that is going to be the next one, which is the letter B. Boy, that wire's kind of stiff. There we go. And then your last wire is this yellow one, which also goes to your ignition switch. You slide that right up in place. And then your voltage regulator is gonna be all set. And then next you can connect your front half and back half of your harness together. And you just slide into place until you hear them snap, just like that. I have a starter solenoid out of the tractor here because mine is back here and you can't see very well. So I'm gonna show you on this one. The most important thing for you to understand about your starter solenoid is that it has to be ground. It is ground by these two screws that bolt onto here, which connect you to the chassis. Sometimes these get a lot of paint on them or they're extremely rusty and that prevents your solenoid from making a good ground and it'll make the solenoid not work. So that's why I'm stressing how important that is to you. Once you have it hooked up, then you can hook up all the wires on the opposite side. So on this side to the right here, you can see that this is just a cable that connects right onto the starter itself. Then you see here you have the letter S and the letter I. S is for the white wire that is in your new wiring harness. In the harness that we're using today, we won't have a connection for the eye, but if you're working with a different harness, you might need to use, um, connect a wire here, which is eye for ignition. So there may be some variation there depending on what harness you're using. And then lastly, the post on this side, you can see I have this uh, power cable and then from your wiring harness, the red and white wire both go onto this post and are tightened down. The other wire that you have in your harness is this last one, which is black, and you can see it's got this easy connection here to snap on, and that wire does, on this tractor, go down to the coil. A solenoid is something that you'll only see on a gas tractor, so if you have a diesel and you don't see this part, don't worry, this is gas only. To wire a switch on a gas tractor, the switch is smaller and it only has five prongs on the back, so I'm gonna show you where the five wires go. You have your large yellow one that has the wide spade. We'll start there because there's one spade on a switch that's wider. 
So that one's pretty easy. Put the yellow wire on there. You have a large red wire. goes right beside the yellow one that I just put on. Then on the back of the switch, you have a double and a single prong. On the double prong, we're going to do that one. You have a small white wire and a large white wire. The small white wire and the black wire go together on the double prong. So it's that simple. Just slide them on. Make sure they click. And then on the single prong, the heavy white wire goes on, and there you are. It's all wired. This is the diesel ignition switch, which will write wire up slightly different. If you look on the back, you can see that there's numbers for all of the posts, and that's going to help us as we follow along. We'll put this yellow and red combination wire right here on that largest prong. That's the um, power feed, the battery feed there. And then we'll move over here to terminal number four, and that's where we're going to put the thinner white wire. This is for your gauge or your warning lamp there. Next, we have terminal number three. Now this you have an option on. We are going to put this black wire on post number three because that's for our thermal start if your tractor is equipped with that. Now, you notice that there's six prongs here and there's only five wires. So if your tractor does have thermal start or does have accessory, you will need to run an additional wire if you have both. Post number two here is for an accessory. So if you have a cab on your tractor or if you have a radio or a cell phone charger, any sort of accessory like that, you're gonna wanna run your wire for that and put it right here on post number two. You could use this black wire on post number two and then run a different wire for your thermal start, but you gotta make sure that thermal start is on post number three and your accessory is on post number two. It doesn't matter so much what color the wire is, just as long as it's the right thing going to the right place. Then this last post that we have over here, that is number five, and that's for the safety switch. And we're going to put this large white wire on here and this red wire that went right up on the top there in combination with that red and yellow wire that's mixed together. Once you have all of that hooked up, make sure that all your wires are securely placed in there and snapped into place. Then you can feed this through the dash and use that nut. You have to take the key off. Use the nut over the top here on the threads to secure it into the dash. On this side, it's really pretty simple. You only have three wires. One of them down here, the white wire in the harness, goes down to the oil pressure sensor. And the oil pressure sensor originally had a little round spade on it. The wire does not go on well. We sell a new one that actually has a spade on it. So I've screwed it into the block. And then this white wire here is going to go right on top of that spade. You can turn it so that it stays away from your power steering unit. Now, if your tractor doesn't have power steering, of course, this is going to be a lot easier to put on. So the oil pressure goes down here. Up here, you have the uh, generator. You have two wires, a heavy red one and a green one. The heavy red one goes around back, and these are different size, so it makes it easier that you can't get them confused. But this heavy red one around the back side is kind of hard to get on and get it started. And once I get that one on, the light one, slips around front and goes on the front. And Rachel's going to take care of the tachometer cable and we'll have this side all buttoned up. We're on to our last two wires. This is the headlight wire which just slides in place. That's simple. The next wire though is this temperature sending unit. So I still have the old wire in here. I'm going to pull that off right now. We had just cut that off prior. Okay, old one's out of the way. New one has that same elbow connector that we've seen before. I just got to slide this down here so that it doesn't get tangled up. And then just slides back on. If you choose to replace your generator, there's a few things you should know about this. The uh, supplier we have right now sends them with the fan on like this and the gearbox on the back. There might be a time in the future when they don't come with a fan and you have to use your old one or you have to use the old gearbox on the back. So I'm going to talk to you real quick about how to put the fan on. When they come, they come with the fan on them now. You have to take this off and you got to take this little plastic sleeve off because there's a key. The sleeve is holding the key on the end of the shaft here. You can see right there there's a key. And the fan is a sheet metal fan and it has a groove right where that is so that you have to slide it over top of that groove of the key to get it out. If you put the fan on, you put it on, found your key in. The pulley is also keyed. 
and it goes with a smooth side out. You can use your old pulley. If you buy a new generator and you have to have a pulley, you do not have to buy a new pulley. You can use the old one. On the old one, down here is the old one, the nut's a different size. The shaft's the same size, the key's the same size, everything's the same except for the nut is a different size on the new one. So if you're reusing your old pulley, you just put it on at this point. Take it off, put it on here. The new one is simple to go on. You just put it on, line up the key, and they go on pretty nice because they're machined and they're nice. I'm using a brass hammer, so I can just gently tap it on. The pulley goes up tight against the fan, and um, that leaves the shaft sticking out. And the way this works, I have not been able to get the lock washer to go on real well. So I've just been putting them on with just the flat washer and the nut so that I can get the nut to go back on uh, the pulley nice and flush. So for whatever reason, I've not been able to get the lock washer to go in and be, you know, to where I have uh, flush with the nut. And I use an impact wrench, put it on drive, and I just zip them back on. And the impact wrench will drive it right down nice and tight for you. And then on the other end of the, once you get the pulley on, the fan's nice. This is an old fan on this one because this one didn't come with a fan. On the other end is your gear drive. On the end of the drive, the part that goes bad that drives the speedometer is this little plastic gear um, that isn't very rugged. It's been that way for a lot of years. And it just slides in the end. If I can get this one out. It just slides in the end. Looks like that and it just comes right out, and then it's greased up, so they, they grease the threads. I just use a little bit of whatever kind of grease you have. You slide it back in, and you gotta go kinda easy to get it to lock into the um, spline that comes across there, so this is sticking out the back. You can see that. I've gotta get it in, and then the other end has the drive sticking right through the gearbox, so boy, you gotta get it lined up and then slide it in. Use the plastic end of your screwdriver. Bingo. There it is. Now it's nice and flush. It's just got a little cover. It goes right back over the top. Two screws. And now you've got a new drive with a new plastic gear. Now the generator on our diesel tractor was the fault of this tractor, so we replaced our generator. You can see on the aftermarket generator that the field is in a slightly different location than the original generator, but it still hooks up the same way. Field here and the armature in the back. On the diesel tractor we have here in front of us, the starter is bigger and heavier. The solenoid is mounted back here on top of the starter rather than over here on the same post as the gas tractor was. So when we got the wiring harness down, it's the same harness. The yellow wire goes to the starter solenoid on the starter here, the yellow with the red tracer. The white wire that went on the solenoid for the starter from the switch still goes in there and it snaps into the front. You can see the white plastic part snaps into the front of the solenoid. The black wire that went down to the coil on the gas tractor is for thermal start on this tractor. So this will go to the thermal start wire that's not included in the harness, but they bring it this far. So you have to go from here to your thermal start. That wraps up our charging system refresh. We hope that this tutorial is helpful to you and that when you perform the steps that we've demonstrated, you will have a tractor with a charged up battery that starts every time you need to use it. We have a lot of tutorials on this series of Ford Tractor. We have a Holley carburetor rebuild. We have the hydraulic repair and the top lid. Yes, the injectors. And we have a clutch on this tractor. Ignition tune-up. So we have a lot of information. If you need to do more repairs on your tractor, take a look through our channel. Chances are good that you'll see a tutorial about it. Thanks for watching. We appreciate you following along. You can subscribe to our channel for a notice every time a new video is released. We'll see you next time.